helping men. The title of this particular chapter is Men Helping Men. Now, when I finish reading this to you, you're going to see why it's dangerous for women to be taking men's side. You're going to see why it's dangerous for a woman to be on a man's side and a woman not being a girl's girl. Y'all claim the bro code, right? There is one. There is one. It's overt. Men helping men. The only reason that I'm not telling you the name of the book is because this book was given, was put in the book, the book club um, group chat. And if you're not a part of the group chat, I don't think I should be telling you the name of the book. Because what's the point? What's the point of having it in the group chat if you're just going to throw it out to people in the public, right? So that's the reason why I'm not telling you the name of the book. But I'm going to read this to you, okay? <sighs> Men could not keep any secrets or sustain any lies without the total complicity of other men. Men could not keep any secrets or sustain any lies without the total complicity of other men. The authors rate this the most underrated boondoggy perpetrated by men upon women. Think back and try to remember. This won't, this won't strain your memory. When was the last time a close friend of your man told you something in confidence like, quote unquote, God, he loves you, or it's amazing, he doesn't even look at other women anymore? or he spent the whole night just thinking about you. It is more than likely his confidence was unsolicited by you, yet somehow it came at the moment when you were experiencing some serious doubts in relation to your man's sincerity. What amazing timing. You probably thought to yourself, just when I needed to hear it, my guardian angel is working overtime. <laughs> How perfect it seemed receiving this quote-unquote inside information. Just when you needed it, offered unsolicited by a trusted friend, chances are you were so grateful to have misjudged your man's sincerity that you never questioned the, sin the sincerity of his cord. After all, why would someone you always considered a friend randomly volunteer an outright lie? The answer is simple, because your man told him to. Your man knew the doubt going through your mind because in all probability, he actually did whatever you suspected him of. It could have been as simple as forgetting your birthday or as complex as carrying on an affair with your third cousin. But rest assured, whatever he did, no matter how low or how dirty, his male friends will always be there for him. Therefore, the authors issue the following warning. Regarding your man's behavior, when you were not there, never, we repeat, never believe what his male friends tell you. You've heard the term good old boys club in the military. For instance, the good old boys club is a network of high ranking male officers who do whatever is necessary to cover one another's asses. In the legal profession, it is the cozy relationships enjoyed by male attorneys, prosecutors, and judges who went to the same schools and harassed the same secretaries. In show business, it is the male power lunchers who gives each other lucrative deals and keep women portrayed as sex objects on screen. In the corporate world, it is the tight group of male CEOs who move from one multi-million dollar job to the next, floating through the boardrooms of publicity held companies on, gold, on golden parachutes which, with massive stock options. When men get fired, other men give them fat severance checks. When women get fired, men give them bad reputations. 
Whatever you may think or hope, no women are ever admitted into this club or ever will be for that matter. How can the authors be so cynical and pessimistic? When it comes to the brotherhood of man, women might as well give up hope it will ever change. When it comes to the brotherhood of man, women might as well give up hope it will ever change. Men will cover one another's asses with the, out, the most outrageous lies and excuses, but they will never cover a woman's ass. That is with anything more than a minuscule thong from Victoria's Secret. Let's pick any ballpark and see how the game is played. How about monkey business at the office? The following hypothetical is based on a true life story. The following hypothetical is based on a true life story. You and your man are having dinner at the home of his business partner and his wife, who are also good friends. After the meal, the four of you are sitting around leafing through some random snapshots when suddenly there is your man smiling into the camera with one arm looped over the shoulder of a very attractive young woman you've never seen before. On the other side of the young woman is an un unidentified man. Who are these people, you ask? Without a moment's hesitation, your man's partner replies, Arthur Lillywhite and his fiance. I forget her name, but this was taken the day they were engaged. That's right, your man seemingly recalls what a pair of lovebirds. <laughs> With this explanation, the snapshot quickly makes its way to the bottom of the pile. What, possi what possible reason do you have to disbelieve what was said? They, these are simple, ordinary, everyday people, a business associate and his fiance. Do you think, wait a minute, why does my man have his arm around another man's fiance? Or... Who the hell is Arthur Lillywhite? Of course you do. Do you open your mouth and say what you're thinking? Of course you don't. Why? Because this is supposed to be a relaxing, interlude, friendly, calm, away from the stress of the world in the home of friends, the last place you'd be looking for secrets and lies. But the fact is, what is actually happening before your very eyes is, massive, is a massive emergency cover-up. Instantly prepared, carefully structured, analyzed in seconds, and executed perfectly by your man and his partner. They move on to the next snapshot so fast that you don't even get a chance to reflect on the fact that half the men you know met their current wives or girlfriends at the office while they were married or already involved. You don't get a chance to recall that all those girls at the office were younger and prettier than the wives and girlfriends left behind. That girl in the snapshot, for instance, is a good 10 years younger than you. And what would you do if you did get a moment to think about those things? You grab the snapshot so fast your man and his cohort wouldn't have time to make up the name, make up a name for the girl, let alone their whole bullshit story about the Lily White love affair. That's what you do, wouldn't you? Not a chance. No, you wouldn't. Why? Because if you did, you'd be branded a jealous shrew. Who wants to be around a jealous shrew who invites jealous shrews to their home for friendly or for friendship and dinner? Who, who wants a woman who makes a scene? So you shut up and the evening rolls on. No scenes, no waves, no outbursts. You're a good little girl. You did what your mother taught you to do. <laughs> but if you're still wondering what happened, it's this. The men were too slick for you. They had your number. That snapshot was a fastball down the middle of the plate and you never even got a swing at it. Such is the natural instinctive power of men helping men. Such is the natural instinctive power of men helping men. You were called out on strikes, checkmated, locked into position, unable to move. Any suspicion you experienced was aborted before it gained life. Truth was dead in the water. 
the men won, the men won yet again. The men won yet again. Now, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? I told you that this is a game. Life is a game. And so my book is called The Game 41 Shades of Men, The Pursuit to Subdue and Use You. Long after I wrote my book, did they put this in the, in the group chat. So as a woman, you taking the side of a man, you help men help themselves while you abandon your side because you want to be a pick me. Right? Because you want to be a pick me. And you out here talking about some love. Men ain't no no love. They are incapable of love. And any woman taking a man's side is a threat to all life. You a threat to all life. Let's continue to read. From these examples, we see that the basis of men helping men is that two or more lives are better than one. To illustrate this further, the authors have given permission to quote an acquaintance JD based on a guarantee of anonymity. My wife, this was my first wife, wanted me to go with her to some jack off baby shower. I think it was with her sisters. So I told her I had to have dinner with my friend Mark at an important business contact from out of town. Actually, Mark was having dinner with the guy. It was a perfect, perfectly good story. Nothing to be suspicious about. My mistake was in underestimating my wife. I gave her the name of the restaurant. What an idiot I was back then. Well, I was young. Anyway, God knows what made her do it, but she showed up at the restaurant and found the two of them there with no place setting for me. Mark, who knew where I was, thought fast. He told her I had gotten sick just minutes ago and headed for home. Good old Mark a man's man. As for the missing place setting, the guy from out of town told her that the bus boy cleared it when I left. At any rate, as soon as she split from the restaurant, Mark ran out to his car and raced across town to an apartment where I was holed up with two of our favorite hookers. I'll never forget my panic when one of the girls opened the door and there was Mark sweating like a pig. Get the fuck home as fast as you can. He said, believe me, I was dressed and out of that door in a minute. I didn't beat her home, but she believed my story about having to stop at the gas station because I was so sick. Y'all, y'all want to believe these dudes, though. You want to believe them. And I keep trying to tell you how they are. I've been around them for years. Look at me, right? I'm one of the guys to them. How many of these dudes come in here and c call me, what's up, what, what's up, bro? Baby, I've been knowing about, they. I've been trying to tell you. This is them all the time, but you want to believe them so bad. You so quick to turn on a woman to take their side. Ain't nobody got time for that. And for the women who have sons, what make you think your son ain't going to be that? Huh? Your son is a male, sweetheart. Your son is a male. Who going to be out looking to do other women like this? You think your son is a good little angel and just going to tell the truth? That what you think? You, 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 you really think that? 